And so, as this tradition of Kabbalah develops in medieval times, uh, late antiquity and medieval times, we see the emergence of uh, seminal Kabbalistic texts, such as the Sefer Yetzirah and others, and gradually we see the emergence of a, a system for categorizing uh, all of the different levels of creation, from Earth all the way up to the highest heavens, and creating a diagram that shows not only what those levels are, but also the different relationships between the different parts of this whole. And of course, I'm talking about the diagram called the Tree of Life. And so almost all of Kabbalah can be, can be distilled down to this single diagram, the Tree of Life. And so what the Tree of Life diagram is, is it is a diagram divided, first of all, into ten spheres, which are called the Sephiroth. And each Sephira is connected by a path, and there are 22 paths in total, called the Navatoth. And each Sephira represents a different plane of existence, a different level of creation, a different level of manifestation from God down to physical existence. And the paths, the Navatoth, show the different connections between the Sephiroth, the different relationships between one Sephira and another. That's the fundamentals of the tree. That's the fundamentals of this diagram. But in addition to that, uh, there's lots of other different ways that the tree is divided up. So there's three pillars in the tree. There are four different worlds or planes of existence which are sometimes uh, placed within the schema of the tree itself. And sometimes the tree is said to repeat across each of the four worlds. You've got the three veils of negative existence above the highest sephira of Keta, the crown. There are two abysses, which divide the tree into three parts. And in the topmost abyss, there is a 11th, so-called false sephira of Dart. Beneath the lowest sephira of Malkut, there are the cliffoth, or the shells, the sort of negative uh, mirror image of the sephiroth, which represent the infernal realms. And there's also a number of triads that appear in the tree, uh, where the sephiroth are grouped into smaller groups of three. So that's a lot. Uh, far too much content for me to cover in this one video today, but there'll be plenty of content later on where I cover each of these concepts in more depth. But the most fundamental thing to know at this point is the tree itself, the basics of the tree as I've outlined, particularly the 10 Sephiroth and the 22 Navatoth, the paths that connect the Sephiroth. And as we go into the 19th century, uh, we see that there are later innovations on the tree uh, by hermetic esotericists. There have also been, in medieval times, some innovations by Christian mystics, so that the Sephiroth and the paths are associated with other things uh, that come from a different cosmology. So, for example, Eliphas Levy associated the 22 paths of the tree with the 22 trumps of the tarot. And there's reason to believe that perhaps uh, that number of tarot trumps was indeed intentional and that perhaps there was some Kabbalistic considerations in creating the tarot deck. But that's another video for another time. Uh, within Hermetic Kabbalah, uh, so the, the Hermetic Kabbalists associated the Ten Sephiroth with uh, the different cosmological levels of existence uh, which medieval uh, esotericists in Europe at the time believed in. So the lower Sephiroth of the tree uh, were associated with the spheres of the seven planets and then the upper Sephiroth were associated 
with the upper three heavens, which were uh, the sphere of fixed stars or the zodiacal signs, followed by the so-called crystalline heaven, followed by the Empyrean heaven or the heaven of pure fire. And then of course you had Christian mystics who influenced Kabbalah in a Christian direction in some senses and the upper three Sephiroth were each associated with one of the three personages of the Holy Trinity. So these are all the different ways that Kabbalah developed over the centuries. And in the in among the 19th and early 20th century esotericists of the Golden Dawn and the AA and similar orders, we also saw the emergence of another modern innovation on Kabbalah, which is the art of correspondence. And what correspondence is, is finding uh, associations between different things, usually uh, different gods from different pantheons of different mythologies, or different symbols from a, across different spiritual disciplines, and finding how all of those different symbols, all those different gods are in fact identical with each other because they inhabit the same sephirot or the same path on the tree of life. So, for example, you can say that um, Apollo is the same as Ra because they are both sun gods and the sun can be situated on the tree of life in the central Sephiroth Tipereth. Therefore, Ra and Apollo are both manifestations of Tipereth, as are all of the other solar deities that have emerged across different cultures. So. In Kabbalah, we have uh, a system for finding meaning in everything, and everything, every type of symbol having its place in a broader blueprint for the entire uh, manifest world. We have in the Tree of Life not only a map of the cosmos uh, from a spiritual perspective, but also uh, the map of our own interior world, of our own consciousness, our own psyche uh, as the human being is the microcosm of the macrocosm that is the universe and as the old uh, hermetic adage goes, as above, so below. And so, by understanding the Kabbalah, we can understand the universe uh, and our place in it, and we can also understand ourselves much better. And we can, we can start to make sense of what different forces or different energies in our life represent in the broader scheme of things. But everything that I've discussed so far is very abstract. Uh, and Kabbalah is a very abstract discipline. So we have this blueprint of the spiritual cosmos and we have this blueprint of our own psyche. What are we supposed to do with that now? Well, there are many ways that you can put that into practice. One thing that the art of correspondences that I spoke about earlier goes to show is that you can put just about anything, you can categorize just about anything in the tree of life. You can associate anything with a particular sephirot or a particular path. And so one way of working the tree of life uh, that esoteric groups in modern times have come up with is by creating an initiatory system which moves through the successive stages of the tree of life by finding spiritual practices which correspond to a certain point on the tree and saying that by putting yourself through that practice or through that initiation and gaining a mastery of that particular practice or 
gaining the knowledge that you must gain in that particular initiation, you have mastered that particular type of experience, that particular part of the tree, and then you're ready to move to the next part of the tree. And so if you look at what the different parts of the tree of life really are, they're, they're archetypal symbols. They are parts of our psyche, of the collective unconscious. And so the, the, way that we, the way that we move through the archetypes is by recognizing them and then allowing ourselves to have an, an internal experience with them and to integrate how that archetype feels into our own consciousness, into our own experience, and move through it that way, rather than sweeping it under the rug in the unconscious and not acknowledging it, and not allowing ourselves to have the full breadth of experience of the world around us and come to a wholeness of knowledge. And so creating some kind of initiatory or uh, practice-based structure where you move through different types of spiritual experience is one way of navigating the tree of life. Um, another simpler way, which perhaps doesn't have the same level of impact as what I've just discussed, is through path working. This is where people will engage in some sort of spiritual visionary work to have an internal uh, exploration of the, the, a particular realm on the tree. Uh, so this usually comes in the form of visualizations and meditations and that sort of thing. So that is the basics of Kabbalah. Uh, there's still a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack so far as Gematria is concerned. There's heaps to unpack within the tree of life and within that even the different uh, ways that the tree itself is divided up. So there will be plenty of content to follow on the particulars of all of that. But in the meantime, uh, what are your thoughts on this topic of Kabbalah? Have you come across the Kabbalah before? Uh, what do you think about it? Leave your comments down below and as always, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time.